From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. And we thank you for joining us this morning. It is Tuesday, February 27th. So let's get started. It really felt like this police chases in San Francisco are already out of control. People who want to commit crimes think that we're not going to chase after them or try to apprehend them. A major shakeup could be coming to San Francisco streets. A decision is in your hands a week from now. Should police have more power during car chases? It, it's a political space. It's a recreational space. They didn't feel like it was um, somewhere that they were welcome to go, that they could um, really enjoy. The fight over People's Park in Berkeley rages on. Activists making it clear this battle is far from over. I truly believe that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. We're, we have a, a, a community-based uh, business here. Taking a chance on a new idea. This new store owner is betting on Oakland while celebrating the community and culture she loves so much. 28 and 0. 28 and 0. When that comes out of my mouth, how do you respond? <laughs> 28 and 0. I smile. <laughs> That's how I respond. Preparing for a big run, these Bay Area high school girls are balling out and ready for their next challenge on the hardwood. And they are making it happen. Congrats to Mitty. I'm Gianna Franco, and those ladies are doing great on the court. I know. We applaud you. I'm Nicole Zalumis. I wonder what their team logo or what they said this year to power through. If they were to put it on a patch, Ooh. what that would be. So we need to follow up with the team and ask them. Well, the coach has a winner's mindset for yeah. sure, so it's win, win, win. Good morning, everybody. We're winners as long as you're with us. I'm Reed Cowan. Let's take you outside right now. Go for a walk on this Tuesday morning, so to speak. And you see right there, the sun is up. And we wish you all a beautiful day this morning. The weather going to take a little bit of a turn, and that's why we're pulling in meteorologist Jessica Birch. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Let's enjoy this dry day while we have it. And tomorrow, too, because we were talking about that winter storm a little bit earlier in the show, and there's a big system moving in that's going to impact the Sierra, and we're going to get a taste of that moisture as well. But let's start off this morning. Cool, calm, dry, widespread throughout the Bay Area. That's what we're waking up to with the mid-40s near San Jose, clear skies above us from our live cam down in the Santa Cruz Hills and all throughout the foothills near Los Gatos. We're waking up and starting off mild in areas like Half Moon Bay with a lot wider wind, lighter winds compared to yesterday too. 46 degrees right now in San Francisco and as you take a live look behind me from our rooftop cam you can see the Bay Bridge stretching over in Oakland and the hills over there where we're also in mid 40s in the forecast for us. 46 right now and the Dopplers dry. Great conditions for us to get out there get some fresh air. Like I mentioned we are sitting in the 40s so off to a cool start this morning but a bit of a warm up into this afternoon and we'll continue to see drier conditions and warmer conditions into our Wednesday forecast as high pressure tries to build its way in. It starts to move to the south, though, pretty fast as we wrap up this week. It's replaced with a storm system moving in from the Gulf of Alaska, and that's going to change our weather quick as we head into our Thursday, Friday, and Saturday forecast, and it's going to impact the Sierra, too. This storm system is cold, dense air with a lot of moisture as it sweeps its way into the Pacific Northwest throughout this weekend. Early into this weekend, too, we're going to see storms up into the Sierra with expected snow anywhere up to around 5 to 12 feet above 5,000 feet. And then back here in the Bay, we're going to get a taste to rain too. We're going to talk more about those rainfall totals coming up in a bit. For now, over to you, G. Thanks, Jessica. Let's talk about the freeways right now. And I'm going to start off with an overview as you get ready to head out the door. Now that we're in that 7 o'clock hour, this is always our busiest hour for the morning commute. Uh, we are typically seeing those brake lights along 880 southbound, which is the case there out of Hayward down into Fremont, south 680 into the Sunil grade. That is slow. And of course, that ride towards the Bay Bridge off the East Shore Freeway. Those are our hot spots right now. Out of San Jose, a little slow too. Northbound 85 and as you work your way northbound 101, just uh, past that 237 connector, there is a crash. They're blocking one lane. All right, Gianna, right at the top at 7 o'clock, a tragedy for the family of a Bay Area UC Santa Cruz student. Police say someone strangled her to death at a beach. And the prime suspect is her boyfriend. Uh, that boyfriend you see right here, 20-year-old Samuel Stone, reportedly the one to call 911. And when first responders got there, they say they found Stone standing over his girlfriend who was unconscious. We do not know her name, only that she is 21. She was from the Bay Area and living in Santa Cruz to attend UC. Stone facing a murder charge and a judge today. An update to the breaking news story we brought you throughout our broadcast yesterday morning. We now know what that was all about. In the end, it was a 12-hour standoff that shut down the Montalban Manor neighborhood near San Pablo. It's over, and we now know a little bit more about what law enforcement was dealing with. There was a suspect shooting a gun through a shed. We're told 38-year-old Leo Ortega was taken into custody just after 4 p.m.
and looking live at Oakland at a Bay Area bounce back. Better future for a business that suffered a devastating loss due to fire. Today, Horn Barbecue could get a $100,000 grant in relief money from Alameda County. Well, they temporarily closed the restaurant after they experienced numerous other setbacks during the pandemic, including revenue losses during COVID-19 lockdowns, vandalism, and attempted burglary. On their application, Horn Barbecue vowed that they wanted to continue being a positive force in the community despite all that's happened to them. The Alameda County Board of Supervisors could approve that grant as soon as today. Nicole? Well, close by in Berkeley, it's taken more than a half a century of battles to see this happen on the UC Berkeley campus. In 1969, students faced off with riot police over the fate of People's Park. Now the park is aligned with shipping containers after the university took it back to finally build student housing. As Kenny Choi reports, some activists say the fight to take back People's Park is far from over. The opposition to destroying the park in Longtime Berkeley resident Harvey Smith is fighting to keep People's Park in its current state. It, it's a political space, it's a recreational space. Smith is an organizer for the People's Park Historic District Advocacy Group. He attended Cal and once worked for the university, but opposes its plan to build housing on this open space. This is the University of California, fully capable of maintaining a beautiful, well-kept park. It's just very short. Some 100 Don't park supporters it. gathered at Wheeler Hall for the first teach-in related to People's Park on the UC Berkeley campus, bringing together staff, students, and community advocates. Smith says student housing can be built elsewhere on UC property. Despite what the administration says, there is actually broad support on, on this campus for maintaining the park, and I think people understand the false choice between having to choose a park and student housing. University officials say there's an urgent need for housing and that the project will provide student housing for more than 1,100 undergraduates. It will also establish permanent supportive housing for more than 100 unhoused and people of low income. Alex Knox is executive director of Berkeley's Telegraph Business Improvement District, which fully supports the transformation. We're very excited to see it finally moving forward feeling very optimistic that it's actually going to go through. His organization recently installed planters at Dwight Triangle that's a stone's throw away from the park. Their vision is to transform it into a public gathering space. They believe keeping the park as it is doesn't serve the broader community. They didn't feel like it was um, somewhere that they were welcome to go, that they could um, really enjoy. Meanwhile, Smith is hoping to recruit more support on campus. We hope to mobilize both the teaching staff and, and more students. Uh, students have been involved from the beginning. It's an unrelenting battle as Smith's lawsuit to stop the university's project will be decided by the state Supreme Court. University officials say the project will preserve and revitalize more than 60 percent of the site. They'll set it up as public park space and create permanent commemorations of the site's history. San Francisco PG&E customers vented their frustrations over power outages seemingly coming out of nowhere. Last night's meeting was focusing on why some areas are hit harder than others. PG&E officials blamed weather and old infrastructure for many of the blackouts, mostly located on the west side of San Francisco, but said on average their crews get power back on to most residents within hours. Still, though, many residents who attended the meeting said they've had multiple non-weather related outages, some lasting for more than a day. Less than two months, four outages. Last year there were three. The year before there were five. They are not just frustrating power outages lasting a couple of hours, but rather on the order of days. I did submit claims, by the way, twice and got rejected, saying that it was, you know, not due to PG&E's control. We spoke to Supervisor Myrna Melgar leading the questioning, and she said the utility's response makes her feel like the priority is not on customer service, but rather elsewhere. 